Good afternoon, everybody. Excellent, excellent. Glad to see we're all still awake. Um, I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions to kick off because I was sat over there and I didn't see all the hands go up earlier on. First of all, um, those of you that consider yourself working for an agency, hands up. Oh, my eyesight's telling me that's about a third of the room. People who believe they work for or own or operate a business. Yeah, that's three quarters of the room. The maths doesn't work, but never mind, never mind. Okay, and those of you that are involved in businesses as opposed to agencies, um, who would you consider yourself B2B, business to business? And B2C, business to consumer? Okay, that's good. So for those of you who are looking this way and couldn't see, it, it appeared that almost three quarters of the businesses are B2B as opposed to B2C. Um, and that's, that's quite helpful, particularly when we start talking about social technologies and, and, and social media. Um, and what I wanted to do was just start off by getting the Prezi to come alive. Um, and I was tasked to talk about the four fundamentals of, of social media success. And what we've done is put together a short video that really just gives an intro to the whole piece and it stops me talking for a couple of minutes as well. Hopefully we've got the sound up on this. Have you got the sound up? Yeah. Mm. Four Okay, before we get into the advert, I thought I'd stop it. So what are we going to focus on in the 25 minutes we've got left? A um, few things. We're going to talk about developing an overall strategy, and that's not just social media, but an online strategy. How to deliver to an on-profile audience. Uh, what I thought was good about today is the speakers are kind of fitting together in terms of the content. So clearly we've been talking about content itself and how important that is. And we're going to talk afterwards, the next one, about authorship and, and how important that is. And social media itself, without regular, relevant, quality content, just will not be successful. Because it probably will fall under the category of spam, where people are simply looking for fans and followers without any specific objective in mind. So actually developing a strategy before you start to target that on profile audience, and we talked about personas early, earlier on, so understanding that audience is absolutely critical. We're also going to cover how does that fit with ORM. This room has been strewn with uh, TLAs, three-letter acronyms, PPC, pay-per-click, SEO, search engine optimization, SMO, we're talking about, no, social media optimization. Who's heard of ORM? Hands up. Just the one person. Excellent. ORM stands for Online Reputation Management. Now, who's heard of that? Okay. 
So it's just another little three-letter acronym, but it's absolutely vital and underpins the conversation turning to conversion. Because without having a great reputation, you may have delivered lots and lots of prospects through to your website or through to your other online presences, but they're not going to buy from you because at the vital point of contact, they're going to draw back because your reputation is either suspect or invisible. We're going to talk then a little bit about in the world of social media, and there is a lot of hype about this if you're not careful. Uh, some businesses have jumped on the bandwagon without even knowing why. Uh, so you have to ask yourself why before you start, because it is a marathon. It's definitely not a sprint. If you're looking for sales tomorrow and next week, then I suggest PPC is, is the vehicle for you. If you're looking for uh, results in six to nine to 12 months time, then search engine optimization alongside that together with email marketing, these other tools. But social media, if done right, will pay you back at the end of next year, but then the year after and the year after that as well. So it is a marathon, not a sprint. But actually, we're going to cover off our website still important in the nature of this. Um, and finally, we'll leave you with some takeaways because uh, on a day like this, the danger is you get so much information, you go back, and it's difficult to actually uh, sort the wheat from the chaff. So what we'll try and leave you with is, is five quick takeaways for you to get involved with. So starting point, developing your social media strategy. Where should you start? Have you noticed how Prezi is getting very popular these days? Yeah. <laughs> It'll, it'll be old hat soon and we'll go back to PowerPoints. But anyway, um, developing your strategy. Well, first of all, it shouldn't be done in a vacuum. Your social media or social technology strategy is not independent of your overall marketing strategy. It's not independent of your online marketing strategy. It has to be working alongside these things. And some of the best social campaigns I've seen will have worked very effectively with the offline marketing and the traditional above and below the line. So perhaps what are the component parts of a strategy? Let's have a look what it might look like in a bit more detail. So uh, we'll start off with the traditional sales funnel. Yes, it has come out. On my screen, it's looking a bit dodgy. So at the top of your sales funnel, uh, you're hoping to attract people who might be prospects, people who might be existing customers that you're hoping to re-engage with and either uh, cross-sell to or, or retain. Past customers who are no longer doing business with you, but you want to drag back into your overall sales funnel. And then people who we might call followers, people who uh, are interested in your brand, they might have connected with you in some way, but they haven't yet engaged as a customer. And I'm going to introduce a couple of concepts here of owned presences, bought presences, and earned. So that's owned, bought, and earned. So the first things are your owned presences. So that's your website, that's your Facebook, your Twitter, your YouTube, your LinkedIn, your Pinterest, all of those things. You have to own them, you have to claim them, you have to treat them as your own real estate, and that takes time and effort. Uh, I won't pretend it doesn't. You're either going to have to do it yourself or you're going to have to pay one of these brilliant agencies in the room to do it for you. Um, but it has to be done. Second thing, then, you need to buy presence because you might have the most attractive website and Facebook page in the world, but it might as well be a shop in the Breton Beacons. It looks beautiful, but nobody can find it. So that's where search engine optimization and PPC comes in, but that costs money. It costs money in terms of the clicks, but it also costs money in terms of building those links. So if you've got a part of your board strategy, the bit that's come along in the last two or three years and started to throw another uh, spanner in the works is mobile. Um, mobile search, as we've just heard, you have to uh, take into account for the mix. Don't treat it just the same as every other search campaign. And secondly, you need to build uh, an online presence through the mobile device that is easily accessible. So uh, I, I must admit, I do agree with the last speaker that actually right now in 2012, Having a mobile website built for a mobile phone is absolutely essential because if you just optimize your old website, uh, it's unlikely to be a very user-friendly interface. You're going to have to zoom. Uh, the click to call won't work. The click to email won't necessarily work. So you need to spend some time and effort getting that right. But that's part of your own presence. So what you need is a web property strategy. So first of all, before you do anything else, you need to get those properties the ones that you're going to own and do something with them. Secondly, you're going to have to have a social tech strategy. So that's your earned presence. So that's people uh, engaging with you through the blogs you might write, through the information you might post, through the white papers you might share, through the videos you might stream. 
So getting involved with those people through those media. So you need a strategy for that to happen. And again, this sits very comfortably with the content strategy we talked about earlier on. And I would certainly recommend some of those tools you saw up on the screen. Uh, we use those all the time for understanding who the personas are, understanding who your audience is, and then getting that down into the tedious work of putting a content plan together daily, weekly, monthly, who's going to do what, when, and how. It's tedious, but it's absolutely essential if you're going to have a successful social tech strategy. Um, and social tech actually goes beyond the marketing. I know we're focusing on marketing today, but actually these social technologies are helping businesses reduce their costs and improve their efficiency in so many other ways. Uh, crowdsourcing, for instance. Um, you know, in the old days, uh, I think it was Anna Marie said you use what's the website um, that you're going to get turned some into presentations? People per hour. People per hour. Who's heard of that? Oh, loads of people. Great. So that's just one of those hundreds of these crowdsourcing sites out there that allows you to quickly match up a task that might be a bit tedious with somebody who's got the skills anywhere in the world and pull them together. So I know we're going to focus on marketing today, but uh, it's worth commenting that the social technologies go way beyond that. They cover just about every department in an organization. And alongside the social tech strategy, you need a mobile strategy. And where does that all fit together? Well, if you talk about your web property as your destination, that's where you're going to measure the return on investment. That's where the conversions are going to happen. But actually, you've got to have a location-based strategy. If you have a business premises with a physical location, unless you're a, a virtual business that is just selling out in the ether, you need to have a location-based strategy that pulls together the conversation that's happening through the social tech. Put those two together, and you've got, on one slide, hopefully, an all-embracing element of your overall strategy. Do these things well, and you will succeed. Um, now, I'm going to play a little video in a second, once we've got the sound there, um, which really plays to the point of the question that was asked in the last speaker, can, you know, can you measure return on investment in social? Hope you find this amusing. <coughs> I find that very amusing. Um, lovely little bit of software that you can use that can create those cartoon type videos. Uh, but the point they were making there is um, there is an expectation that because it's online, you should be able to measure the return on investment of everything. And therefore, sometimes, whether it's the CEO or the SHMU, uh, they are expecting a return on investment individually from Twitter, from Facebook, from LinkedIn. Uh, and I would contest that whilst it is sometimes possible in very tight campaigns to measure ROI to an individual action on a social media. Generally, it's a little bit more difficult. 
difficult. That doesn't mean to say you shouldn't measure it. If anything, the more difficult it is, the more important it is that you measure it. But, for example, you might write a white paper that is 10 pages long. You create an executive summary that is a blog post that is 500 words long. You then tweet about that and you post an update on LinkedIn. Somebody reads your LinkedIn update, goes through, checks out your Twitter stream, goes, these guys know what they're talking about. Let's have a look at the blog post. That's worth downloading the white paper. Let's have a look at the website. Great. Let's pick up the phone. They talk to a salesperson. The salesperson says, let's have a meeting. Six months later, they do business. Which one of those interactions resulted in the sale? Hands up, anybody who has the answer. I guess the truth is they probably all contributed. If that chain of events had broken anywhere, if the salesman had answered the phone badly, if the blog post had been poorly written, if the person, when they went through to the website, couldn't see that they had a good reputation because there was no five-star feedback, any of those things may have resulted in a non-sale. Conversely, if we're not doing all of those things and measuring them individually to see the impact, then you're going to miss out on those things that are having a benefit. So, for example, uh, we talked about some, some measures along the way. Yes, gathering uh, followers on a LinkedIn company page is important. It's a lead measure and it's worth measuring, provided those people that you're gathering are on profile, on target, somebody who might do business with you in the future. So if you're measuring the right things and then measuring the interactions over time, you will start to have a measure of success. And when we talked about thinking beyond just social media, social communities, who's heard of gamification? Yeah, okay. Uh, I think a year ago, if I stood up at a conference and said that, maybe one hand would have come up. We've already seen that in the way that um, uh, you know, things like Foursquare have started rewarding people you know, two or three years ago with badges, and people of my age were going, crikey, give me money, I don't want badges. But the 18 and 20-year-olds get turned on by badges. Um, I have to say, the way LinkedIn have just implemented endorsements, and the fact that they've got lovely, pretty little faces alongside the endorsement, feels quite a lot like badges right now. I think that'll settle down into something of greater value, but there's no doubt about it, gamification on social media is having quite a big impact on its usability. Uh, crowdsourcing and so much more. <coughs> right. Um, just in case you want a little bit more information about any of those, we've developed a whole uh, series of um, materials around the 15 dynamics. Uh, if you click on that link when you get the download, you'll be able to find out more information. So, if that's how to develop a strategy, how can we start to deliver content to an online target audience? Well, the first thing is you've got to define it, and I won't spend too much time on this because it was spoken about a little bit earlier on. You'd need to develop persona, and you need to match uh, where they are. Now, here's a little bit of useful data. Uh, it was taken off um, a marketing report. It's about six months old now. And what it did was it looked at, um, probably at the back you won't be able to see what those mean up across the top. Let me just tell you what they are. The left-hand one is, are people comfortable meeting face-to-face? -face? The second one is talking to people on the phone. The third one is dealing with electronic messaging, voicemail. Third one, a fourth one, email. Fifth one, video chat. Next one, IM, stands for uh, instant messaging, and that includes things like uh, Facebook. You've then got text messaging, and lastly, you've got Twitter. Uh, why Twitter has been separated out from instant messaging, I can only assume they sponsored the research. So, um, veterans on the left-hand side, as you might imagine, very comfortable talking to people. It's what they grew up with. Uh, very comfortable talking to them on the phone. And as you go down to the right-hand side, less comfortable with most things. A little blip around Facebook because they, it's the way they keep in contact with the grandchildren. Baby boomers. Uh, hands up who's in that group. Just me. No, no, there's a few more. A few more. Okay, so the baby boomer group, obviously very comfortable with the left hand side. And uh, because my wife forces me to, uh, very keen on using things like Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and all the rest of that. However, you'll start to see a swap over at Generation X. Um, clearly, we've got to think about the tools that we're going to engage them with. Quite often I'm speaking to managing directors who happen to be in the baby boomer era and they don't get it. You know, why should we be doing all this woofty tufty Twitter Facebook crap? And I have to say, if their customers aren't in the Generation X, maybe they shouldn't be. So we need to be matching appropriately the tools for the individuals. But if you move across to Generation Y, 
Can you spot the one thing that they're totally uncomfortable with? Talking to people on this thing called a PDA or smart phone. That's the word, phone. They are not comfortable talking on the phone at all. Uh, we've got teenage boys. Uh, if we phone them up, we get their answer phone and they text us back. They will not speak to us. And, and I have to say, this is one piece, piece of research I've seen in recent years where I stare at it and I go, yep. I agree, it's probably 100% accurate. So when you're looking at which social media you should be engaging with, the starting point is, where's your target audience? What personas are they? And match them. And then once you've done that, the truth of the matter is content is still king. So you need that content plan, who, what, where, when, and why. Uh, and if, it, if you haven't got the time to do it, and I can't say I blame you if you haven't, then outsource it. Uh, there's at least 25% of people in the room here who would be happy to help you do that stuff. Um, but you have to work in partnership with an agency if you are going to outsource it. It's not something you can throw over the fence and say, oh, they can get on with that. Uh, because they are standing in your shoes when they are communicating, whether it's through Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, with your clients or your prospects. So, moving swiftly on, where does reputation management fit in? Well, from the introduction, I hope I got across how important reputation management is. In fact, I think it's absolutely vital. Because if you don't manage reputation management, up to this point, you've spent a lot of time and money building your websites, building your social media platforms, getting the content out there, driving people to your owned presences, only for them to go somewhere else. Because if they don't have the evidence in 2012 that you're the business they should be doing business with, they will definitely go and seek out your competitors. Uh, who's ever bought something on eBay? Crikey. Just about everybody in the room. Um, here's a little question for you. Seller A, seller B. Seller A has done 100 trades and has a score of uh, 98. Seller B has done 10 trades and has a score of 50%. Who's going to buy off seller B? Okay. Now, you don't know any of those people who've left feedback on seller A, but simply the power of the crowd says, well, actually, 100 people can't be wrong. Well, they might be, but if you got to 1,000 people, I would say, no, no way are they going to be wrong, and that's probably a perfectly self safe purchase. So we have grown up over the last five or ten years conditioned that when we're going to do business with somebody, if we take their brand name, their company name, pop it back into Google, we're going to see the results about them. I'm not talking about keyword searches for red shoes here. I'm talking about the name of the company. When you put that into Google, you will see what their reputation is about. And actually, if you put in the words reputation or feedback or reviews, you'll get guaranteed two or three pages of specific stuff. And based on that, you will very quickly decide whether you want to do business with them. It doesn't happen by accident. Uh, you may have done business with 10 people in the last week. I suggest you didn't get up in the morning and say, I must go online and write those guys a review because they were really great. Who's written a review in the last week unprompted? Good man. <coughs> I wrote a review in Manchester unprompted, but I won't tell you about that one. Um, <clears throat> that's because usually the unprompted ones are the bad ones. Usually. Now, people in the UK, I find, are quite nice. Um, if they've had a good experience and the business bothers to get off its arse and say, could you give us some feedback? Most people will probably do it. But actually, if you just say, can you give us some feedback and give them a blank sheet of paper, it's hard work. But if you ask them specifically, can you give me some feedback on, for example, OK, if, if it was you guys, I might send you a bit of feedback that says, uh, did you learn anything new in the presentation? Uh, is there anything that you might implement as a result? Uh, would you suggest other business owners have a look at what the UK marketing network is? If you give people specific questions, they can answer them, and then you're likely to get a response. So as well as prompting, you need to listen and respond to. And, and the tool that was just mentioned earlier on, um, we've got things like uh, Google Alerts. There's a whole bunch of other tools you can use. And here's a little video that just talks about this in a bit more detail. Sound coming up. Three simple steps to managing your online reputation. Whatever size your business is, you can no longer deny that you have an internet presence. The worldwide web increases 
significantly influences how business is transacted, most significantly by providing a platform for consumers to publicly review your products and services, whether you like it or not. The choice is simple. Either you ignore what's been said and run the risk of losing customers, or you take steps to manage your online reputation. Online reputation management is essential in establishing and maintaining a strong web presence. The following three steps are key to developing a successful online reputation management plan for your business. 1. Monitor what is being said about you. Putting measures in place to be made aware of what is being said and where people are saying it is the first part of your plan. There are a number of review sites that exist solely to allow your customers and clients the opportunity to post reviews about your business. Monitoring these online conversations will enable you to proactively manage your online reputation. 2. Listen, understand, participate. Once you have learned what is being said about your company online, you need to evaluate the impact it might have and then respond appropriately. Participation is key. Let customers know you value and welcome their feedback, good or bad. If it is a negative review, try not to get defensive. Assess the comments objectively. It may even lead to making improvements. 3. Broaden your online influence. In addition to publishing your own business blog, having a presence on the leading social media networks will greatly enhance your ability to positively influence the online conversation. Sharing insightful, helpful and engaging content will provide plenty of opportunities to enhance your reputation and improve your credibility. In conclusion, keep in mind if you are not proactively managing your online reputation, then you are leaving it to be managed by the actions of others. To find out more, Okay, um, when you get to that slide, there's a, a white paper you can download that uh, not only goes through the seven steps, but has a whole bunch of tools that you can use. Tools like Google Alerts, Hootsuite, TweetDeck. Um, you need some things beyond Google Alerts, because of course, Google no longer takes a feed from Twitter. Uh, they fell out commercially. Uh, so you need, if, if you're trying to monitor what's being said about you on Twitter, you will need TweetDeck or Hootsuite or one of these other tools. Um, and it says respond and prompt. So there are industry specific sites that obviously encourage feedback. So uh, Foursquare, which is you know, all sorts of hospitality, TripAdvisor, clearly hotels, restaurants, that type of thing. Uh, beyond that, um, there are individual websites. In fact, I was going to demonstrate one which was uh, Rate Your Solicitor. Uh, but here in the UK, that's just been shut down by a judge. Uh, which was interesting. Um, it was only because there was one, one act of defamation. Uh, the judge accepted that 99% of the reviews on there were all valid, uh, but there was one solicitor, he knew something about the law, uh, and, he, and he sued and shut them down. However, uh, they are popping up all the time, industry-specific rating websites, but we talked a lot about Google Plus Local. Um, Definitely for your businesses and the businesses of your clients, if they have a physical business premises, they need to take control of that. And actually, they need to encourage feedback through that mechanism, because it, there's no doubt it will filter through to uh, the results on Google Places. It may well influence the algorithm that determines the, the order. Um, there are other tools out there, things like Louder Voice, which is a totally independent platform, that once you've got feedback through that, you can then post it using JavaScript on your Facebook page, your website, your blog. So it's about taking one piece of feedback and virally spreading it so that it, it's the power of the voice perhaps on steroids. Um, and I think one of the other things I should mention about that is when you're gathering that feedback, um, thank people publicly. Uh, for instance, we've got some clients who might have 4,500 four followers on Twitter. If somebody says something nice about them on Twitter that day as a direct message, maybe half a dozen people see it, but if they then publicly thank them, the four and a half thousand people that are following them will see that. So again, think about your strategy and how you can get this out to a much wider audience. So, um, it started 10 minutes late after coffee. How long have I got? Five? Yeah. Five, okay. Um, so is your website still important? Who thinks the website's still important? Hmm, perhaps I shouldn't play the video. Um, okay, well, I'll play the video anyway and see what you think. Five reasons 
why your website is still important. The increasing popularity of social networks in the last few years has seen huge changes in the way people access the web to socialize, shop, and build their online profile. It has also influenced the way businesses of all shapes and sizes have adapted their web presence to gain an advantage. So, with so much interaction taking place over social media websites, you might be forgiven for thinking a conventional website is subject to requirements. The following five reasons outline why your website is still the most important component in building a successful online presence for your business. 1. Maintaining ownership. It is critical to protect your company identity by owning your business web address and websites. This will avoid surrendering control of your brand to the mercy of a third party website and their ads. 2. Your content, your way. Content is still king, so being in control of how your content is presented is key to effectively getting your message across. Maintaining control of the user experience will enable you to manage content relevancy and your conversion process. 3. Create a content hub. Your business blog should be the focal point for all of your content marketing activities. Using your social media presence as a means to engage your audience and ultimately bring visitors to your website. 4. Attracting search traffic. <coughs> a well-optimized website plays a vital role in attracting valuable search engine traffic. Facebook, after all, is still a closed door to the search engines. 5. Monitor, tweak, improve. Being able to analyze website statistics to measure conversion rates, monitor backlinks, and assess visitor engagements is essential to improving your online marketing activities and ultimately achieving the return of your paid investments. In conclusion, if you want to take online marketing seriously, don't neglect your most valuable online resource, your business website. I love the way you faded that out. That was beautiful. Okay, so the five takeaways that I want to leave you with today. Um, first of all, define your strategy. Match the media you're going to use to your audience. And I would say spend as much time as you need to in this area. Uh, I think the old adage that um, planning is the painful bit, but if you get this right, implementation becomes easy. What you tend to see is a lot of businesses going head long into social media, jumping on that bandwagon without actually thinking through who's their audience, what are the messages, what does conversion look like, and then you spend a fortune, both in terms of time and money, having to go back and, and redo that. So get the strategy right first, then obviously have an implementation plan, and again, throughout the day we've heard measure, review, refine. So again, Think in the implementation stage how you're going to measure these. What does success look like? Um, and quite often, uh, failure isn't that in the sense of it, it's not a waste of time. Uh, a bit like um, Anna was earlier on saying that you track all the keywords to find out which ones you want to throw away. That doesn't mean to say that was a waste of time. Without that, you would have spent a fortune search engine optimizing the wrong keywords. So PPC them all, find out which ones convert, find out which ones convert with the biggest ROI and concentrate your time on that. And then taking that into your social media strategy, work out what are the blog articles going to be about. Spookily, the same keywords that you're trying to optimize your websites and your other presences for. But this isn't just about search engine optimization, it's about engaging real human beings. So beyond that, you need to coordinate your plan with your online reputation management plan because doing all of the stuff before that without getting your reputation out there and simply asking for it in a standardized process, you will get the results you're looking for. So at the end of a piece of work, post of, part of your post-implementation review is asking for feedback, but don't ask for it on a piece of paper that's gonna go in a drawer, ask for it online. Because once it's online, you can share it virally, you can use it a hundred times over, and your reputation is there forever. And last but no means least, don't ignore your website. So put all that together and you've got a structured online strategy that's not just about social media, it's all of those elements. And if you want any more information, uh, please, that last slide is the only thing I've mentioned about our company. 
just give me a ring any time. Uh, I give free advice for a while. We are a consultancy. We will charge eventually, but uh, at the point when you're happy uh, and not before. Uh, any questions? Have I got time for one or two? Yes, absolutely. Any questions at all about... I shouldn't walk away from the mic. About social media. I've covered it all so well, haven't I? Or you're all bored and want to go home. One or the other. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time.